just once. I'd like it to be sunny outside for more than five minutes at a time. It's been raining on and off crazy for the past like week and it's driving me crazy. Hey guys, it's El Supersonic U here with episode number 21 of the In-Depth series. This episode is going to, I use the term loosely, kind of cover obscure models. Like, no, I kind of already used that term in a Zelda Obscurity In-Depth series video. But essentially, this video is going to showcase models that are kind of standalone, they don't go to any set, and they're of characters I don't sculpt very often. I think it's a pretty good way to put it. So yeah, in case you haven't kind of figured out by now how I'm, I'm kind of doing this in-depth series thing, because I haven't posted an episode like this in a while, is I usually do 10 in between each video game playthrough model video, and then I end the 10 with or rather I start the 10 I guess the next group of 10 with that prototype one and then I kind of go from there just so I don't over excessively post these ones even though maybe I do I don't know but obviously I don't have as much stuff to review as I did two or three years ago but regardless yeah I wanted to do this tonight I thought why not might as well don't really care for a time limit as I'm kind of already doing already a minute 20 into the video yeah so I'm in my night mode here but it's all good also, just kind of a brief little video update. I know I probably do these way more often than I need to, but yeah, July, going to be kicking it really cool. This is kind of the start of it with an in-depth series episode. I probably will have more of these throughout uh, the summer, but again, also got some... I, I would really like to do some vlog-type things. I'm going to do a Let's Play. I'm going to really pile on the chalk because I neglected that almost entirely last year. I uh, got some more drawing videos, stuff like that that I'm starting to do, so it's just really cool. I'm hoping to post, like I said, maybe two to three videos a week. Two videos would be really nice, one at the beginning, one at the end, and then maybe a third in the middle. But we'll see where that takes us. So, with enough rambling, let us begin this in-depth series episode number 21 with these obscure characters. So, first off is Dr. Mario, and I think that this episode is really going to kind of showcase the diversity and how my clay has evolved as if I haven't really done that already. But here's a really nice standard Dr. Mario model for the time. It's really small, really basic, and really captures a character that I don't sculpt nowadays but would have when I sculpted it because I was probably heavily into melee, which is why I kind of decided to sculpt him. But the sculpt overall isn't too bad. I mean, it's pretty much a generic Mario sculpt, which I could do pretty well back then. Aside from the coat's looking a little weird, kind of, I just didn't know how to really separate a coat, I guess. The little hair that should be in front of his ears is actually behind it, so that's kind of weird there. And the hair on the back of his head is kind of weird as well. He's missing the little circle thing on the top, because I do remember that broke off. I glued it a couple times, but it still broke off. So, we got a nice little Mario, Dr. Mario figure from Melee. So, that's the first one. The next one is... Now see, this is kind of where it kind of gets debatable, because like some of these you, you could kind of say would, would go to a set or something, but I, try, I tried to pick ones that really kind of stood alone, kind of that I, I made not having a set in mind. So this next one is the Harry Bubble Orb from Pikmin 2, I believe, and I really had the motivation to make him because I thought that this back here, I used cotton balls to kind of recreate that, I guess... I don't know, like, furry kind of uh, texture that he has in the game. So I thought that was really cool, and that's kind of why I really wanted to sculpt this. And it worked out pretty nice. It looked a lot better when I actually made it, because it's kind of fallen off now. I can't really stick it back on. But overall, a nice little sculpt, nice little model. Clearly this is a lot kind of bigger and a lot different than any of the other Pikmin that I've... Or any of the... Yeah, pretty much any of the other Pikmin models or Pikmin enemies that I've made over the course of the years. I actually... Uh, I should maybe do that, do an in-depth series on the Pikmin box, which really hasn't gotten a whole lot of limelight at all since, like, Video Game Clayfigure Models 2, because out of all my clay, I think that was the box that I ended up packing away, because all this stuff is actually still out. Like I said before, I ended up unpacking a lot of it because I thought it was worthy of displaying, even though it's kind of, like, pushed up against the wall, so you can't really, you know, see all the clay as it was, like, three or four years ago. But, yeah, I, I just showed some of the Pikmin models off because they don't get a whole lot of limelight anymore. These guys do because, I obviously, I probably wouldn't be doing as many in-depth series episodes if I didn't have access to these guys. But I still feel like I should display them in a slightly better spot. They just You can't really see them when they're all kind of 
against the wall. Anyway, next, these next three are actually Fire Emblem characters. The first one is Marth. Hoping that the light's not really giving me any inter interference. But yeah, here's Marth. So I never was really a big, well actually, I, I think I used to be a really big fan of the face, and I'm still a pretty big fan of the face, however, of course, I could get it a lot better by today's standards. But honestly, for the time, and even for nowadays, this is a pretty good Marth model looking back. There are some models that I sculpted a long time ago uh, that I'm just like, wow, I can't believe I sculpted that and thought it was good. This, however, is one that I sculpted, and I, I still think it's pretty good to a degree. The cape is a little bit kind of f more flat than I wanted it to be. And I still think this arm is kind of long, just because, I mean, the shoes are right there, so it's kind of, I don't know, kind of awkward, maybe a little bit. But overall, I think it's a pretty good Marth, a pretty nice posture, and I think he does stand up. So, maybe not the best in terms of detail, but definitely really nice in terms of an actual, like, sculpt, and to try and get the character as best as I could. He does stand up, but this is kind of like... Uh, a sloped surface, so he's probably not going to. I'll kind of just leave him there. Next, I want to show Ike, which kind of I think I made probably... I, I want to say around the same time as that Marth, but it was probably a few years like later. But I probably based this heavily off of that Marth because they're about the same size and stuff. So this like actually isn't very good. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's pretty good, except... The face is really bad, and the hair is really bad. And I want to say that happened because I made one head, and I think it was, like, too big or something. So, I couldn't use it, and I had to sculpt a new head, and of course I didn't really want it because I took all the time on the first head. So I think it kind of ended up getting like this. That's just my best guess. Maybe I just made it really bad. I don't know. But overall, I mean, it actually is kind of nice. Again, kind of like the Marth. There's overall decent proportion decent posture, a nice little model, just the face is the one thing that kind of bothers me. And I probably, I would say I obviously did use the Brawl artwork, because I didn't know about I can until Brawl, so, although I don't know why his sword is kind of up like that, probably due to my laziness again with kind of just pushing it in there, be like, rather than making him try and, you know, hold it out to the side, like in the actual artwork. I'm going to suggest I maybe added that stand on a little bit later just because uh, it just seems kind of out of place. So that was Ike number one, Fire Emblem model number two. This is the last Fire Emblem model, as I said, and it's actually the second Ike. A few years later, I ended up deciding to re-sculpt the Ike, I guess. For I really don't know why exactly. Because I've never really been a big fan of Ike. I always liked Marth because I always always used Marth in Melee. So that's kind of how I uh, got a liking to the character. But Ike I never really liked. And in Brawl I didn't really care for him much or anything. But this is Ike based on Fire Emblem Radiant... Pa Path of Radiance on the GameCube. And it's done a lot better. Hoping you can see some of that detail there. But I did try and add a lot more detail. That's the problem, though, with this type of clay, is that it smudges a lot. So all the detail, I'll, some of it got kind of smudged in. Some of it didn't, though, so I guess that's kind of good there. The head... I I, I may have confused the Ikes I, when I said that I sculpted the head too big or too small on that one. I know this one, I actually did sculpt it too small originally, because I do have a prototype head with some of my other stuff that is really small, and I couldn't use it. So, I do remember this was the second kind of head that I made on this one. But overall, it's actually pretty good. I mean, you can tell it's Ike. It's a, I would say it's a better likeness than that one. So, and he does stand up. I think my reasoning for sculpting the second one, however, actually was because of my dislike for the first one. And I'm like, you know, I need to make a better Ike. But rather than doing kind of the generic brawl one, I think that's why I decided to kind of sculpt one from, I think, the most recent game that he was in, aside from Brawl. I could be wrong, I'm not a Fire Emblem aficionado, so I wouldn't know. Alright, next is something completely unrelated to Fire Emblem. These, are, these actually, uh, the next five models have absolutely nothing to do with each other, and more or less nothing, nothing to do with the ones I've shown. First is Professor Layton. So I used to re be really into Professor Layton a while ago, and that was obviously the reason for sculpting this model. 
I think for, again, kind of, not to repeat myself, but for the time and even for now, it's a pretty good looking model. Uh, my only complaint, though, is I, I think it's it's nice, but Professor Layton is kind of, I want to say, like, short and kind of, like, chubby, I guess. And this one's kind of slim and tall. So I think if I was to re-sculpt it, I would definitely make him, you know, kind of kind of shorter. I definitely could re-sculpt him because he's easy enough to sculpt. I really like kind of this, the way that his uh, his arms kind of naturally just, I guess, just, just naturally slope. I mean, look at the back there. I really like that, just... Just, just the way it looks. So, yeah. I want to say at one point I was maybe going to do a whole set. I, I think Luke was kind of in the works, but I never actually made Luke. Maybe pull some of these guys out. Uh, I guess it's good enough. The next model I don't believe I have ever, ever showed off, except in a collection pick, in, or in one of my big collection shots from years ago, and it was kind of this prototype taboo, I guess. From Brawl, he's pretty much all in blue, so there's not a lot to talk about. Uh, a part of me says that he was going to go to the cancelled Brawl site that's not actually cancelled, but it really is, but I'm just not going to admit it. Another part of me says that this was going to be a standalone model that I was going to put, like, the butterfly wings on, but I never got to it. Because another part of me says that I started making this, really didn't want to, like, finish it because I didn't... I don't think it shaped how I wanted it to shape... And it just looked kind of blobby and unproportionate, and it resulted in uh, just kind of a model that was unfinished. I will probably never, ever make a taboo, so I guess that's my first and last taboo, as of right now, anyway. This next model, the third to last, is actually probably, is actually probably, my, one of my favorite clay models that I've sculpted just using the colored clay. And... It's a quote from Cave Story. So, this is probably one of the largest models as well that I've sculpted just using colored clay. It's pretty big, and I think that it's just really, really spot on. I mean, it actually was a spot on model in whatever video game clay model video it was shown off, and I f think it may have been the 6th or the 7th. But, I just really like the eyes, really like the face. I did the hat really well, the body... One of the biggest problems with me is I'll get the face really well, or the head really well, and then just the rest of the body or something will be disproportionate, but this one is just all in proportion. It just looks really nice. It has a nice stand, kind of a nice little statue, you know. You can display it on a table, display it on, you know, anywhere really. It's just, I don't know, I just really like it for all that it is, and maybe all that it's... It, in its simplicity too because quote really doesn't have that much detail to him i remember i did have to combine a couple different artworks to actually kind of get this because i've never re really been able to find any cave story artwork and i really wouldn't consider the the cave story 3d artwork like good artwork and i think at the time i was sculpting this cave story 3d wasn't even really like out yet or it wasn't even i don't know it, it wasn't like publicly known so i kind of just had to find whatever i could but I think it looks really nice. Got the scarf there, hair all the way in the back. Yeah, I can kind of go on and on about this. I just think... And one of the best things, too, is the way that this hand grips the gun. It it just looks really natural. Kind of like Professor Layden, it just looks really natural in its appearance. So that was a quote. The next model is kind of... I, I, I wanna, Part of me just chose it because I needed to make an, a nice even 10 models for this video. But it's this Fang, and I actually made this around the time that I made my Super Real Knuckles, which I think is goes as far back as Video Game Clipping Models 1. This guy I think I may have shown off in the third Video Game Clipping Model video, but yeah, he's kind of been in the shadows since. He didn't go to my Super Real set, but I kind of sculpted him, as I said, with the Knuckles. So, yeah. Obviously... I don't think as much care and detail was put into him as Knuckles because he wasn't a part of my set and he was kind of that second model done with a first one that took all my kind of energy and esteem. So the second one usually suffers. It's pretty nice considering I don't think I've really made any other fangs aside from the Sonic the Fighter one and some other ones. So this is really the only full-size fang I've made. And yeah... He's pretty good, could be a little bit better, his snout should be kind of out more, and I kind of gave his 
pop gun, cork gun, like, a little, uh, a little, like, string, I guess, which I don't know why I did that. I think I was just kind of thinking that it was like that, but it's not really, so, yeah. One thing that kind of intrigues me more than anything else, though, is that I remember at the time, especially because, as, as I said, I did make this with the knuckles. I've said that for, like, the third time, but I considered those really like jumbo at the time and i remember back then i thought they were really big and i picked this up for like the first time in a couple years today and i'm like wow this is really small and i thought this was really big so it just kind of shows you how times or i guess how i've built up my clay and how my perception of clay has kind of changed so as i said that was kind of the theme for this video because you kind of notice all you know as I said at the beginning, all the different, all the different kind of, you know, basic over here with Dr. Mario, advanced with the quote here. And finally, we conclude with one more model that's actually really, really recent. And I kind of chose it because while it was, well, while it was in Video Game Clay Figure Models 9, with some other mo with some other I guess characters that I've sculpted for the first time, this character I don't feel like I'm going to sculpt too many more from the series. Whereas some of the other characters that I showed off, I feel like I could easily turn into sets. So that character is Crash Bandicoot. Hope I didn't disappoint anybody, but yeah, I don't really see myself sculpting any more Crash Bandicoot uh, characters. Maybe another Crash, like a couple months or so down the line or maybe a different kind of generation because this one was the crash one type crash but other than that i really don't see myself sculpting any other kinds of crash so i think it's really i, I think it's pretty good and just kind of well i don't know i almost don't even know where to start i guess we'll start with kind of the size so this is actually a really big model he's almost as big as he is as big as quote pretty much, well, kind of, but he's, he's kind of hunched over, but no, I, I would actually say from hair tip to, like, the top of the hat, he's just as big as quote, so nowadays, I would consider this a small model, I really would, I mean, look at that, I would consider Crash small nowadays, I just sculpted him, and he just ended up that big, didn't really mean for that to happen, so definitely a scale increase in my clay. Next, kind of the diversity, I guess, again, with kind of how this is like this whole episode's theme is like the obscurity yeah crash he's like the only non-nintendo character not counting fang in this entire group and i guess cold if you wouldn't count him really so kind of to go along with the diversity you know sculpting a first crash you know this large and kind of for the first time i guess like having it look really good or i don't i say i don't really want to like i'm boasting but to make it look in my opinion, this good, you know, for a first crash, I'm pretty impressed with it, and it just kind of does show, again, the diversity that my clay has kind of gone through, so I do like this crash quite a bit, actually. I'm so glad I was able to get it to stand. That was, like, my, the hardest part, but I kind of made sure that these, um, the soles of his shoes were really flat and that, you know, he wouldn't have any problems. I laid him down in the oven just for anybody who wanted to know who follows my clay tutorials, did not try and risk this guy standing up. So I laid him down in the oven and he did end up standing on his own. So with that said, those are all my clay model obscurities, kind of the characters that I've only sculpted one of and probably won't sculpt a whole lot more, if at all. So thanks for watching guys, this is episode number 21 of the In-Depth series. I'm L Supersonic Q and later in the week we will have another video. Thanks for watching and Finn.